Um, I'm going to call to order the uh, Thompson Station Board of Mayor and Alderman uh, meeting for November 9th, 2021. Uh, first order of business is uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, board, we have before us a consent agenda um, containing multiple items, uh, mostly Canterbury uh, roadway improvement acceptance. Did any, any board member wishing to pull anything off the consent agenda? I'll entertain a motion then. Can we ask questions about the truck or do we need to pull it off? Pull. Okay. Can you yeah. pull the truck off? All right, we're gonna pull, have a request to pull item J which is purchase of the dump truck, we'll take that off consent. Okay, I will entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, I have a, I have a motion. I'll second. Properly seconded, discussion. Uh, if we don't talk about this wrong, does that mean we can't purchase it in time for delivery? Well, we're just gonna have a discussion yeah, can, about it. Okay, we're after just, that, good yeah. point. All right, so I guess all, so we're, we're now gonna be voting on consent agenda items A through I. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, that's all eyes, four to nothing. So we will discuss item J, which is purchase of the dump truck. Hey, staff, can you give us a quick? Uh, sure, uh, and I'll turn it over in a minute to Brian. We did budget for this, and of course, as everybody knows, supply and demand now being what it is, you virtually are unable to acquire trucks, and especially these types of trucks. Um, what was included in the package included the state contract, and mid-10, which is where we bought the last one, was more competitive than the state contract, which is the case again this year. Um, as I think Andrew or somebody said, <clears throat> the fact of the matter is, if it isn't ordered at this point in time, it's gonna be even longer than August. That's what they are telling us. How much longer? I can't tell you. But even now, ordering it, we will not get the vehicle until next August, August this coming year. So what will happen is in the budget, we'll have ample time for the additional amount from the 60 to the mid 70 range that's in here for the dump body and things of that nature. Um, Brian, would you go ahead and add anything else that you had to add? You're talking about order in time? Any anything you feel or anything these guys want to ask that I didn't cover? Uh, if we order it by Friday, we'll be able to get it by August of twenty two. If we don't order it by Friday, it'll be August of twenty three. Yeah. They told, each company has told me the same thing. That's their deadline is Friday. The town might not be able to afford a dump truck. By <laughs> <Yeah. day. laughs> That's right. That's good Have they done a search? For this truck all over and and i will say this we looked at another option enterprise as a service they work with local governments and they too would have to order it and their program didn't work for us because they had a three truck minimum <coughs> provision but they pretty much told us everything that we're relaying in terms of supply and demand and ordering and so forth. Are we uh, are we holding on to the old equipment? So this is an addition. Some of that older equipment, they enterprise. We had them look at the value of some of the older equipment, and some of it was a couple of thousand dollars. So it's probably worth more to us okay. just to have it as an additional vehicle or backup than to let it go for that. Are all our vehicles equipped to handle snow? Or is it just the one? No, I've got three that will handle snow. Four, actually, four will actually handle snow. Being that we're going to use the brine this year, I've got four trucks that'll be running. Two will be able to run the brine before, all four will be able to run the brine before, and then the salt boxes that we have now will be on two. That's this dump truck that I'm going to order. I'm going to have it equipped with salt box in, in the trial. Do we have four people that can drive the truck? Yep. All right. As long as they don't quit on. Eh. 
right. All right. Any other questions regarding the dump truck? Are we ready for a motion? Make a motion to approve the purchase of a 2021 20, dump truck? 22? 2022. 2022 dump truck. I have a motion. Second. Motion is seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Or nothing. All right, that concludes the consent agenda items. We'll move into announcements and or agenda requests. Real quick announcement from here. I didn't say this at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, mayor Napier is unavailable to be here tonight, so I'll be facilitating the meeting as vice mayor. Um, any an other announcements or agenda requests? Just one thing we talked about, Mike and I talked earlier about the stoplight signal. If we, you could just give us an update at the end of what you sure. found out earlier today. So we can just get through all that. One thing I did, uh, I was at the last planning commission meeting and I just, uh, with some of the issues with the streets in Tollgate, there may be a need. I notified the mayor for a possible special called meeting in December for the board of mayor, Alder, board of mayor and aldermen. So I just, I want to continue to keep that on his radar, although, although he's not here tonight, uh, that he would have to be calling that meeting. So it's, it's involving the possible action that may be required uh, with bonds in the, in the neighborhood. I'll keep that on everybody's radar. Anything else? Okay. We move on to public comments. I didn't have a sign in sheet. Regina, nobody signed in. Is that right? Okay. We'll open up the, the microphone to public comments. Please come forward. Anything to say, please say your name and your address, and it is limited to three minutes, so the mic is open. Okay. I see nobody wants to speak. We'll close public comments. Moving to unfinished business, item number one, the redistrict, redistricting uh, comptro comptroller's office considerations and directives. I'll turn it over to staff. I think uh, the latest documents have been provided. Uh, you have hard copies as well. So, do you want to talk further about it? Or? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just make sure I clarify a few things. So, these are, and again, I know. Perk sent out to you all um, some research on this issue, so you have that, and we can certainly discuss parts of it. Uh, but one of the things that was asked for, what are the possibilities? So according to Mr. Hill, um, the effectively the seven uh, possibilities you have before you, there's two options for two wards, two options for three wards, two options for four wards, and the seventh actually violates a few of the tenants of wards, the six ward options, because of the way the census blocks works, and we can get into that in a minute. But those are, in his opinion, as a GIS consultant for the comptroller's office, the, the options available to the town, given the census blocks and the, and the current population. We've also got um, an Excel spreadsheet of uh, municipalities in the state that do have a ward system, um, so you have that for your review. But again, this is the committee. Uh, the BOMA designated themselves as the committee, uh, and what we're uh, looking for, if anything, is advice on if we need to be drafting an ordinance or not. Um, again, there's some time constraints in the spring um, on when this would need to be done. I think the latest is May. Uh, for a second reading of an ordinance. Ideally, it would be earlier just because of voter registration cards going out at the end of February. So that's that's kind of where we are um, in terms of presenting this, and it's the will of this committee to direct us on what the committee desires. You all had questions um, in our prior meeting. We'll try to capture those questions and answer them. From a approval standpoint, cannot be done by referendum, it, sh it would be done by the vote of this body, and it would require a supermajority, four out of the five of you, uh, a two-thirds vote uh, to approve whatever your choice is. Uh, as far as the number of wards, number of aldermen that could potentially exist, um, because the town was formed, 
before June 30th of 1991, you can have as, by statute, you may have as many as two aldermen or two wards, up to eight aldermen or eight wards. Again, that would be done by ordinance, approved by four out of those five members of the body. As far as the, the town being able to have at large members, as you could, uh, again, from the memo, certainly you can. It's just, it's just a, it's a scenario that you may put, put that in place. Um, and down the road, you may need to look at reviewing that and changing it. Some of you may still be on the body at that point. That Some of you may not. It's, it's something that probably on a regular basis needs to be, re needs to be reviewed. And that's what I walked away from the research uh, with is, sure, you can, you can have at-large members, but it's just you need to review it on a regular basis because your demographics have changed and you need to potentially consider changing that at-large uh, decision. So uh, we'll be happy to try and answer other questions that you have. We'd like I said, we'll try to capture those that you talked about the prior meeting. So tonight, we're ask, you're asking for direction if we were to continue to proceed with drafting a, a uh, resolution. We would ultimately draft an ordinance. Ordinance have two chapter. readings. Okay. Yep. We, would, we would have public hearing. Um, you know, this is, again, preliminary. What, mm -hmm. what is the will of this committee? And this comes out of the committee and gets presented to the full body. I know you're the same, but technically that, that's the way that would work. And, and I will add one other thing before if you all have questions, of course, ask them. We would need, if this body does want us to proceed on uh, any path of creating anything more than one board, which is what we have right now, everybody's at large, um, we would need to work with uh, the local uh, Williamson County Election Commission in the state because there are a few little nuances that could come into play that we need to kind of hammer out the cycle and sequencing of future elections because you're in a lot of ways hitting the reset button. Uh, you can't reduce the term of any elected official, um, but for everyone else who would be up for election, all those positions, it's a, it's a bit of a reset, um, as you saw in the memo. So I just wanted to point that out. Obviously, if you have questions, so does those. Well, uh, should we start with the discussion? I think you mentioned the six six ward, six council council well, council members. All we're saying aldermen. Um, I would assume will remain aldermanic, not not council board. Is that correct? Okay, even though it says council members. No, it's done. Can Can you speak a little bit about the concerns you had? You said about the six, six and six. So. From my understanding from Mr. Hill, and he apologized for not being able to be here tonight. If there's another meeting on this, he will make himself available. Um, but again, he did say these were the scenarios he could come up with. So we, we know that we have the set that, that is available. If you look on the six ward option, if you see in there, the, the middle or donut hole of Tollgate is part of ward six. You are supposed to make all wards contiguous. Yeah, yeah. That is not contiguous. Not contiguous yeah. So he did not advise that as an option. You no. can, but it leaves it subject to attack legally. So that, that's the concern. And, and really, again, I want to point this out there. He presented to me after the last fellow meeting is a program the town can get into, and I think we should do this. It takes a while. It doesn't take effect to the next census in 2030 to break up census blocks into smaller blocks so you have more flexibility. There is a census block and you can see it. It's Tollgate, it's the outer ring there. It's 914. That is a census block and that is actually a limitation. That's why you can't have eight because it's too big for eight um, and, and why it's a problem for six because that effectively ward two on the board is that sole census block and you can't mash it together in the other way. So that, that is just a fundamental flaw in how the uh, Census Bureau put the census blocks in the municipality and I think from a staff level there's going to be an application to further refine that so there's flexibility in the future. Okay. 
And refresh my memory when we have even amount of aldermen, how are we breaking ties? How is the mayor, mayor. where would the mayor come from? So the mayor's at large. At large. Okay. The mayor has to always be at large. Okay. This would only be for aldermen. So as you saw in your packet, if you were to proceed along three wards, hypothetically, that would necessitate, because uh, you need an odd number at the end, you can't have three aldermen, three wards, and a mayor, that's four votes. You would actually be creating two aldermen at a minimum per three wards, so you'd have six aldermen and a mayor for a total of seven. So that's why he put it together that way. The, the, if you go with an even number of wards, you can conceivably stay at four aldermen with the mayor at large. If you go with an odd number of wards, um, you would need to go to two aldermen per ward. As the town grows, is it easier to keep a smaller amount of wards balanced, or is it more challenging? Or does or do, do more wards make it easier? Because we, I mean, we know of you know, through sewer reservations and, and neighborhoods that are on the radar. Well, if I think I understand your question, um, is how can we reevaluate this or how can we prevent it from getting out of, of balance, right? Yeah. I, from, a, from a population to right, right. representative. You're supposed to, as, as he explained in the last meeting, you need to be as close as you can in, in population totals per ward across all the so we know, like just looking at what's on the board right now, we know down there in the southern part of Ward 6, there's going to be a lot of development. That ward's going to grow. Uh, we know in Ward 4 and, and in Ward 6, the rest of the Canterbury phases are going to cause those wards to grow. Uh, we know Ward 1 is going to grow because of Parsons Valley, and that there's a few others I was talking to Michael about the other day. There's a lot of growth happening. You cannot take future growth into account. You have to look at the census numbers. And the only time you get to reevaluate that, you can draw new wards, but it's always based upon the 2020 census until we get to the 2030. That's the numbers you so, have. Yeah, redistrict, redistricting, or whatever we call it, is only happening every 10 years. You can do it multiple times if you wanted, but it's based upon the 2020 yeah, census. Yes, so you can redraw it. It's only going to be based on what we have. So no, that that we have to we, if you said, oh, we, we're going to start with this and we don't like it, they could change it. But. And and then w tell me uh, what's required in terms of voting for redistricting without without in between censuses. Is that a supermajority as well? Yeah, it's same the vote. same process. Every time you redistrict, it's a it's a two thirds vote two -thirds of majority. whoever's voting. So you know, hypothetically, three members were at the meeting. You'd need two. If all five were there under the current system. You don't want to go outside that variation. And again, we're talking about our local maps, what happens at state and federal levels, redistricting. What's That's the number of uh, approved? I mean, we can count taps and just say, you know, call it average two, two voters per home or something like that. Do we know what the approved, what will be approved, roughly? Like, do we know how many homes are going to be in Littleberry? Uh, we can, and backing back into it with the million gallons we have now, we have about 5,000 left in capacity, taking into account all the new subdivisions for a million gallon plant. So that's part of the discussion now about going to one and a half, 1.25. Matthew, you might be more helpful in this than I am. What's the quick math on that? If we, however many we, how many homes we have approved, at least through wastewater reservation that we're expecting? Roughly, how many homes would that be? But he's making the case for later. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I, I could add some numbers. This, uh, is it? Is it? Two thousand. Thousand. Well, Certainly more than that because we have that now. Yeah, taps. More than that. I mean, between what is existing and what's been yeah, approved, it's not been So we're talking about we've got 4,500 4, people. 4,500 yeah. 4, people you're counting towards the, the voting rolls. Right. Potentially doubling that. Oh, yeah. Before the next census. Yes. We exactly. Should, this process can't even take that into right. that's, right. that's my yeah. point. Yes, that's right. A lot of this has been drawn. I, I mean, ultimately, who, who gets the, I don't get to say that term that I said last time, 
Who gets to draw the line? <laughs> Jury <Jeremy>. Jury <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we get to decide how we draw the lines and we can't take into account future right. growth that we know is imminent that's, that's right. on our back door. Um, so that's why that's where Thompson Station is uniquely situated with that growth. You know it's coming. Yeah. 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 So and so we, we do have to change this? No. Right. It's just May. That, yeah. After June 30th, 1991, it says shall. Right. shall. This yeah. is May. If yeah. Thompson Station were founded a year later, it'd be a requirement. Um, so the only other thing I'll, I'll say on that point is while you can't take future growth into account directly, you could look at the options to see which one balances future growth because you know it's happening in a lot of different areas. Uh, so you can pick one, but again, the ward lines are based upon 2020 census populations. So, uh, you know, again, for example, you, know, you know there's going to be growth in four, a lot in six. Um, one, uh, I don't know about three, that just seems to be the southern part of the um, don't, don't think there's going to be much growth there. Uh, two's not going to have that much growth. There's, two has all the townhouses that are left to go. That's true. Okay, so sorry. Uh, two will have growth. Um, five is, I guess, forgive me if this is the wrong term, the older part of Canterbury. So that's kind of set. Um, in terms of, of growth, so yeah. well, what you also know is with demographically how it's going to So, you, I guess the question I have you, you're saying we can't do anything else till 2030, but you said we can redistrict. Define that. Just what do you mean by redistrict? Draw lines. Okay, yeah. Based upon 2020 census data. So, really. Here's another way to look at it, and I'll make it a little more simple. Um, maybe Kirk has a better way of putting it. The what I'm calling the six options. Put that aside because I think that, without it being contiguous, is a problem. But the other six options presented, those are the six options for the next nine years. If, if redistricting were to happen, it would effectively need to be one of those six. So you pick. Again, very hypothetical. You pick option one and two wards now. And in three years, the BOMA says, no, let's do, um, let's do option two of four wards. That would be how this would go. That's the flow. So you don't have an infinite number. It's not a fractal. Uh, you've got six paths. Yeah. Uh, at any point, the BOMA could, could by a supermajority, pick to redistrict, to draw new wards based upon the census data, and that comes <coughs> from the GIS consultant. Originally, it was recommended that subdivisions should not be split up right. because it doesn't really make much sense. Well, and largely because of the way the blocks laid out. That yeah. made it very difficult to, uh, to do anything different. And again, each was, what, 921 plus or minus, somewhere around there. Yeah, it was just under 1,000. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would, I would agree. I mean, subdivisions being split up is going to be very complicated. We already have enough problems with people that think they live in Thompson Station, but they don't. Um, or they don't vote in Thompson Station elections, even though they have a Thompson Station address. I think that makes it challenging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did? <laughs> um, but, you know, I, the ward, uh, pursuing wards interests me and I think is important to me because it's, a, it's about being prepared for growth. And if, if our town was, de it was being developed or being populated um, evenly across all of our property, all of our square miles, I wouldn't be as concerned with um, representation being distributed. But we're not, we have nodes, and that's the way our LDO is kind of built. We have nodes and population is gonna grow in certain areas, which, I mean, just honestly, we have every part of this town has every area in this town has different concerns, you know, politically, you know, um, that, that they need representation, they deserve equal representation. Um, I, I do think that uh, pursuing wards is appropriate. I don't know, I'm, I mean, I'm on board with expanding the, the board uh, as we grow. I mean, it's a, it is going to be a challenging thing because it is a super majority, so we all have to get behind it. Um, I'm willing as a board member to talk about other options that doesn't have to be expanding the board, it can be keeping the board the size it is. 
Um, I do think that more wards gives us more options to, you know, modify borders necessary as needed. It gives us more flexibility as we develop, as more neighborhoods uh, become established and grow within these different wards. So, yeah, I apologize for not making the last meeting where we had the work session. Um, I know that was a critical to this discussion, uh, but I do support um, some path of creating wards. And I guess for us to, it's super majority tonight to talk about moving forward with any kind of, or is it just a? I think it would be a regular majority. It's the ordinance that requires. That would need to require. Okay. Okay. And again, it's just directives. If there's more information you need, you know, if there is going to be a December meeting, for example, uh, you can again, yeah. keep this on the agenda and bring back more information if you need cap information or. Future growth again can't take it into account directly, but if you wanted to know where that future growth pocket is and how do we have wars that are balanced, I mean that's uh, that, that's a possibility. I know uh, Alderman, you, Zan, you talked about splitting up subdivisions, and one of the topics last month was Canterbury being split up under a four ward um, scenario because Canterbury is so big because they're they're two thousand plus and that doesn't. Yeah. Just, Report uh, for the GIS consultant with four wards. Um, yeah, the, you know, as an example, the, the two two ward scenarios effectively, unless I'm reading this incorrectly, either puts Canterbury and Bridgemore in a ward, and then everywhere else would be a, the other ward, and then you flip it north on the other option would be Canterbury and Tollgate as a ward, and everywhere else is another ward. That's a scenario that does keep. Uh, subdivisions together, but it also puts them with a lot of other benefits. We may not always be able to keep neighborhoods um, contiguous, but at least until we understand how the system works, it seems like it makes sense to me. So if we look at this option, the three ward six council members, option two, that means we're expanding the board, correct? Correct. Two by two, and the mayor still. The mayor has never counted in any of this. That's Correct. when we say three wards, six council members. You have three wards, three at large. Uh, you could do that. You could also do two uh, aldermen per ward to get to six, um, and uh, and have the mayor at large. I guess one thing you just popped into my head, and I don't know, Kirk, what you would think of this if you did three wards? Would you have one alderman at large to keep it at four? Keeping the so that's number. one thing. That's definitely one option to look at. Because yeah, you have the mayor at large. Because if we're talking about dividing things up, to me, that's the it's this one I'm talking about right up there. It's yeah. It just doesn't take into account any growth. Right, but I mean, it just it divides we're, everything up. We're 4,500 voters, and we're getting ready to potentially double that. You know, in nope. the next few years, and it, it just one and yeah. two are going to grow. What, what, what happens in in Ward Three when the people who are rural are claiming the representation, and their alderman lives in your neighborhood? It's the exact same problem that we see. Well, the main now problem is, is we don't have an at-large candidate. Is that I talked about this last time. You, if you represent Ward One, you become you create these pockets of uh, politics. I guess where you're not beholden to anybody in three or two. You're just beholden to the people in one. And that, yeah. So there, there's going to be a lack of leadership or yeah. you know representation in the long run because right now people can come up to four or five people wherever they live and hound us to to do something that's important. But all of a sudden. Now, uh, you know, I'm in two, now I don't need to worry about three. I feel like that takes a little bit off of what a small town should feel like when, when you're representing the town. I don't think there's vast differences in the people that live in such yeah. a small area. Well, I mean, that was the, the, as it was presented to me, it was like, you know, the reason why we want to discuss this is to provide representation for people like on the west side of town who may not have, have representation. But right now you've got, Four aldermen and a mayor who are at large that are beholden to the entire population of the town. This means you have one elected representative or potentially two, two of the six in a ward system like this. So it, it, it creates even a, in a town this small, I feel like it creates even a further gap between, okay, if you live in Ward 3 and you want to have representation, now you, 
instead of voting for four, you're voting for two of six. It, it seems to me it seems at the at large system, which is really what we have, works great for a smaller town. But I, I'm I'm thinking not just of us today, but as as we grow. And I think yeah, I mean I know you could say that there's um, you know partial or or war politics, if you will, but it also gives you know the representative of that ward. Let's say Ward Three. Let's call it a rural ward, whatever we want to call it. That representative is acutely aware of the issues and very. I mean, I mean, I know everything about Farmer John's, you know, issues that he's got on his property. Whereas right now, most people that I'm speaking to are in my neighborhood, so I have an obligation to get out there and, and visit with those people. It, it, it for, it's, it's two ways. It forces the the political body to get out there and meet those people at the same time. Ideally. Everything's out here. Yeah. And at the same time, you know, it allows, you know, the voter the voter to get to know they know exactly who is their um their their carries their voice um at, at the board level. So that's what I can only speak for myself, but I know if we did a ward situation, I would not just be worried about my ward, I'd be worried about the whole town. That's just how I'm wired in what I do. I look at this all from, I can tell you from a business standpoint. I work for a large corporation. My bonus is based on my performance, but there's also a part of my bonus that's based on what the company does. There's also a part of what I do of mentoring younger people who come up to my company because someone's got to do the job anyway. So you have to look at it as a whole. You can never just look at it as, I'm just Ward 2. I don't care about you. You can't do that. That's not what a leader does. Leaders lead. And it doesn't matter, you know, you can't put boundaries around what you do. You have to look at it from a holistic standpoint. Yeah, your focus is whatever ward you represent, but you have to look at it from a town standpoint because everything affects the town. And that's just how I represent that. We can't just be certain fragments of it. And you know, I look at the growth standpoint, where we're headed, what we're doing. We're going to, we're going to grow over the next 10 years. We have to be prepared for that. And that's the unfortunate part is, I hate saying it, we haven't been as prepared going into this as what we probably should have. We've had stumbling blocks, we haven't done it. So the decisions we make now move forward into what we're doing. We've got some catching up to do, but overall we've done a, a nice job. Just I think we can do a better job of growing as a town. However, even the growth in the next 10 years won't matter for our ability to make decisions with changing redistricting in between now and then. But it sets the forefront of what we're already doing. Oh, sure. I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for, as the town grows, more membership on the board and award system in the future. I'm just concerned that with having to use these numbers for the next 10 years, I, I find and I lean that it, it becomes a little bit more representative for everyone to be at large. I, mean, I would like to move this on, but have the comptroller in to answer more questions. I think we're a little handicapped in a way of not having him here, but I think we definitely have some more exploring to do from that standpoint. I mean, I think there's some, like you just said, there's probably a couple options we hadn't thought of, but maybe he can say yay or nay, but I think we all have valid points of how we're looking at this, and we don't want to jump into any wrong decisions. But I think I think you're I think you're safer getting advice from the comptroller's office because then you're relying directly on the entity that has generated the information. And if there's a challenge of it, at least you would be relying on that information, that data, and those proposals. Uh, I don't know if they're going to make a, a recommendation to you, but I would call. I don't think they're going to necessarily do that. Uh, but I think. Obviously, having more information is always better. In terms of drawing the wards, I think they've made the recommendation to the So you have right. that. And, you know, if this committee needs more information, like we said earlier, if we need to look at where these new nodes are going to be and give rough estimates, and I know Matthew can look at where the taps are reserved, we can at least have those numbers. Yeah. Theoretically, you could take whatever, you know, node or whatever you think is going to be the largest growth, and decrease that almost 9.9% like .9 lower, knowing that in the next two, three years it would be. Yeah. It, I think that's valid. I think there's a study that overlays number one, you know, preliminary plats. 
that are approved. And then and then all maybe, you know, maybe it's wastewater reservation. You know, that'd be a kind of overlay. See those two overlays? I think it's a valid at the board that brings a valid point to, to see if and finding, you know, what what is it the average voter per household? Is it one point seven? Is it one you know, what are we I think it's best we get all the information that we can before. So am I hearing from the board to just continue to the research here and prepare a, a presentation at our next uh, regular call meeting? Okay, do we need a motion on that? Is that enough? Okay, we're good. Yes, I think that's, that's good. good. Again, yes. this is a committee meeting. We're just looking for feedback. Um, All right. I, I will add one other note. I know they're significantly larger, but Franklin has wards and at-large aldermen, and they just went through an election, so if you wanted to see an example of that very recently i just encourage you to look at uh, how that went um, but again the at large is not an option here because of their charter they had theirs changed mm -hmm. they had theirs changed but we again we we think it's it it's can, but it, they have an even number of at large that's wards. Right. that part we can't do that's right right but you can do the four wards that's right. large. we have to get to an odd number of yeah. votes some way right. so mm -hmm. and the mayor's always at large to take that Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Uh, unfinished business. We are understanding we are. No. We're not. We're keeping item two. Yes. Christline condemnation appraisal. Town staff. Mr. Mr. Chair, we had. Uh, our office had circulated to you the appraisal that, that uh, come back uh, on that property owner's property involves six, I think, easements. And certainly you all have that, that number. What we are asking for tonight is for your approval to proceed to uh, give us an opportunity to negotiate with the property owner for at least, uh, I would submit through January. Maybe, maybe then we can come back and report what the status is. Uh, and at that point, if we're not at closure with it in negotiation, then probably proceed with the condemnation. So that, that is our request tonight is to be able to Go forward and negotiate with that number in mind. That this particular piece of property is part of phase one. I think there's one easement that is not a part of it, um, as we as I understand, but the remainder of it is. So the, the majority of the easements involve the roundabout. That's right, sir. Sure. But this does not delay us in getting no. started. No, no, we've got, we have, we have the right to proceed. Correct. Okay. Is that All right, board, any, any questions or comments about this condemnation appraisal? All right, I'll entertain a motion. Direction. Make a motion for the Kreitzlein condemnation we're going to make an emotional. A motion to can proceed Which, with the con okay. condemnation negotiation. So, yeah. Okay. Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. Move to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Sounds like the ayes have it. Okay. Moving on. Uh, item number three Christ Lane traffic plan slash BOMA action regarding detour through Canterbury. Um. Mr. Vice Mayor, if I may, just we kept this on the agenda. I know there's obviously been several times voiced to concerns about the detour through Canterbury. Please recall that the very first phase of phase one is dealing with a section of Kreitz Lane so that that work is completed to allow that entrance into Canterbury to be open. So when the rest of phase one through Clayton Arnold is closed, the detour is available. There's still time on that. We're just keeping it on the agenda in case something were to happen, uh, that there's feedback, hey, we need to ban on street parking or anything like that. We've talked about it before. I don't know if you'll have any feedback, but I also want to take the opportunity. You know, we've been talking with Brandon Baxter about the exact timeline. I just wanted to read his most recent email when we asked, you know, when does construction start? And so there is a pending TDEC permit and as soon as that is approved, which they anticipate at any time now, they've submitted everything they have to. There's nothing on the town or the engineer or the, the contractor's part. We're waiting on TDEC. Uh, Rogers can uh, 
immediately start on anything that does not require a road closure, that's erosion control measures, they may have already started some of that. Um, this, this was a November 2nd email that he said that could start by the end uh, of this week or during next, so we're right in that time. And then the other thing he noted, Rogers must provide a minimum of one week notification before the road closures can take effect. Those were the electronic signs that the board requested that would be put out one week ahead of time before any section of Kreitz Lane is closed and then they will be used throughout the project. Um, but right now we're waiting on the final T deck thumbs up to, to close that first section. So there will be a part of Kreitz Lane closed. The Clayton Arnold intersection will not be closed. That will be the next phase of phase one. The third entrance will be closed. Correct. What about parking, like for construction workers and everything? Else? Where does that happen? They have built parking areas. I don't know if y'all noticed the gravel pads. Yeah. That's that's going to be for their construction parking. You approve it? You're good with all that? Limited I mean, you've been over there watching them do it, so. Yeah, it's going to be a limited area of parking in there. They probably don't have a huge crew. No. Yes. And the options are limited. Yeah. And we also have Avenue Downs. I don't know if they're going to utilize Avenue Downs at all, but that's still under construction and that can be a little bit of overflow. Um, I'll also note that uh, our office, Kirk particularly, has given uh, various members of Williamson County School System updates. <clears throat> here's the plan, here's what's happening. Please be aware of it. And as soon as we know that a closure is happening, we'll make sure. Town staff will make sure that um, the school system knows because I know I think Alderman Zinn, you pointed out to me that it's going to change the school bus schedule uh, and the route. So we want to make sure that's not too disruptive. I think we've sent to you all, we've reached out to their transportation and asked if I mean, anything we can do to help facilitate it, accommodate it, communication with you all. We're happy to do it. And so far, we haven't received any feedback. So hopefully, they are making Continue. their parents aware and just keep giving them information. Sure. Yes. Yeah. As much, more the more the merrier. Yeah. But have we had the conversation with Spring Hill yet about the we, closures? We have had discussions, and as recently as today, the uh, meeting I've mentioned with the mayors, the administrator, and I, we have three dates now that may work. One of them is soon as Friday. Whether that will work with everybody's schedule, I don't know. But um, this is going to be a more face-to-face -face effort. Um, again, a lot of communication gets thrown in a lot of directions. Kurt, as you probably know, with Dixon County is involved with the school board, and that's helped facilitate the flow of information, but it hasn't resulted in any feedback. So sometimes it actually takes that face-to-face -face opportunity. Uh, they certainly are well aware of everything that's going on just as we're aware of what's going on there. And we've requested a traffic study, which was in that interlocal we all approved because of what's going on um, in the development corridors that um, people are already starting to complain about before they really even are in the throes of construction. So what that will result in I don't know, but we're requesting that traffic study as well. And, uh, more information and more communication. But at the end of the day, it comes down to, I guess, whether uh, people meeting can actually do something to ameliorate or otherwise uh, soften impacts. I guess that remains to be seen. It's a little off topic, but on the Spring Hill issue, there is a meeting later this week on that, and Frights Lane will likely at least be mentioned and obviously with that meeting as well. And I've let their attorney know about this and, and sent some documents. So their information is being forwarded. Um, Are we talking about the new, the new Port Royal? That was, that was yep. one of them. That's one of them. So the last remark regarding um, Brandon's communication um, is going to be at some point the fact that we're erecting different signs and other odds and ends, there will be a change order and cost for those things. We do not know what that is yet. That'll come back from the contractors, subcontractors most likely, 
Um, good news is that this project coming in at 1.4 versus, I believe, the estimates I had seen as high as 2.8, we've got, uh, frankly, quite a, uh, especially with what's going on now in the world in terms of trying to this get a contract the, uh, side. Yeah, it's a windfall. Local traffic only sign? Huh? This is like for the local traffic only handful of signs? Yeah, all those kinds of odds and ends. Yep, yep yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> so, uh, I've asked a couple times for a milestone schedule. Yeah, we've gotten two or three of those from Brandon. We'll get another. I haven't gotten any of them. Like, I'm talking real simple. What's the phasing? Plan? Yeah, Start, right. Stop, months. Let's check back yeah, on that one page, yeah, for sure. One page milestone schedule. We'll ask for it. When we get it, we'll send it to the board. To the board, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Not sure we have Okay, uh, no action required on this. That's just an update, correct? Yes. Okay, all right. That closes unfinished, unfinished business. We're going to move into new business. My understanding, item agenda item four is being deferred by the request of the landowners. Is that accurate? I think that's accurate. There's still some nuance to the uh, agreements. Uh, I know I sent y'all a communication about that uh, earlier today. Um, there's a lot of documents involved. Uh, there's two other attorneys, Mr. Jordan's attorney and Mr. Magna's attorney, and I'm waiting on a little bit of feedback from that. We are getting very close, um, and there's just a few more things that need to be done. I am very optimistic that this will be ready fully at the next public meeting. So I'm just per their request, and I think it would be wise to defer this, a motion to defer, just to the next meeting. Okay, so that does require a motion from the board? I, I would prefer one. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll follow, well, I'll entertain a motion. I'm sharing here. Uh, I'll make a motion to defer uh, item four, downtown Thompson Station Streetscape update and proposed agreement. Second. Okay, got a motion probably seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, passes four to zero. New business item number five, first reading of ordinance 2021-013 investment policy. Turn it over to town staff. This is, um, I think, a lot like a number of things we're doing in terms of now trying to set the stage for the future, revisiting ordinances, creating new ordinances, new policies. What you have is not a reinvention of the wheel. Some of the information came from Virginia. Uh, some of it came from um, jurisdiction close proximity. Steve's cobbled together uh, the document. And I think it's, it's obviously, uh, helpful to have guidance like this as we move forward and we grow and investments become more of an issue. Steve, would you like to talk a little bit about this? Um, sure. So this comes from the fact that uh, we recently received uh, $974,000 from the American Rescue Plan Act from the feds. So we received that. Well, we were granted a total of $1.9 million. We received half of it this year, half of it next year. And we can take these funds and park them until we, until BOMA approves for to, to use them. So it's just a plan to invest the funds wisely, safely uh, in, that, in that arena. Right now, uh, the LGIP funds pays 0 0.02 and the savings pays 0 0.00 minus one. Uh, so it's not, it's just a better plan to help uh, generate some extra funds. And a policy like this needs to be in place before we invest. Correct. Those dollars. Yes. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, it just it sticks in the savings accounts. Yeah. That money, though, the federal money that was part of the discussion, that's got to be separated and kept independently anyway. Mm -hmm. So this, will, I think, this will help in terms of having all of their ducks in a row. That was a, uh, I think, more of the impetus for bringing it forward at this juncture, though. Okay. We can discuss or I'll entertain a motion from the board. I'll make a motion to approve first reading of ordinance 2021-013 investment policy. I have a 
Motion. Second. Motion probably seconded. Um, any discussion on this item? Any further discussion? It, I assume this policy is similar to other jurisdictions. This is pretty common. Yeah. Did, did this come from MTAS or where did we get this? Well, one you saw came from Warrington, Virginia. They updated oh, after our letter. letter there. Okay. Um, then another came from Columbia. They're, they're relatively similar, um, and that's why we showed, I guess, state to state sort of the similarities. Mr. Chair, this is yeah. relatively generic. And it's also pursuant to the code, Tennessee code. Right. Okay. So, yeah, we're okay. limited in what we can. Right. We can Correct. Case. Would this be part of, I mean, our auditors annually, would they, this this document be critical to them in any way that they need a review or anything? Obviously, it's. I think it, it just helps them and it helps the comptroller see that we're managing the money as directed. Okay. All right. It just gives very clear guidelines. Okay, any more discussion? Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Sounds like it's a four to zero. Pass. All right, we'll move on into a new business agenda item number six. Approval of barge professional services agreement for the Bridgemore sewer rehabilitation project. Sam? Thank you. Yes, we've had um, for some time the inflow infiltration issue that um, the utility board, staff, and um, our consultants, barge, and subcontractors have been working on in terms of trying to isolate an area for inflow infiltration. Uh, all sewer systems are gonna have a certain amount of that. The difficulty with this, ironically, I guess, is it was such a small, comparatively speaking, amount of uh, inflow infiltration to track down, we ultimately ended up having smoke testing, TV or camera work, and so on and so forth. Long story short, segments um, in uh, Bridgemore Village uh, came to the forefront as the areas largely in question. And the utility board took up the latest, which was, you're gonna see this information that's in front of you, um, what generally the findings were and the recommendation ultimately was um, for rehabilitation and the methodology to be used and an estimated cost and so forth. So I don't wanna steal any more of Matthew's thunder. Maybe you should perhaps proceed if you don't mind. Sure, sure, thank you, Ken. And that was a very good introduction. I was planning on saying most of that, but uh, yeah, just to kind of dovetail on what Ken just said, um, this has been a, kind of a culmination of, of some flow monitoring, some CCTV work in Bridgemore. We were able to, with the flow monitoring, to kind of isolate Bridgemore as the biggest problem area in the sewer system to where inflow and infiltration is getting in the system during rain events and shortly after rain events. So uh, we ended up TVing, or there was a, a subcontractor, or sorry, contractor with the city that TVed all of the pipes in Bridgemore subdivision. And this is just a couple examples of, just to kind of give you guys some context. The uh, picture on the right is there are only a handful of ductile iron material pipes in Bridgemore, but all, pretty much all of them had this issue on the right. Is basically there's water, there's, there's evidence of water seeping in at the joints of these pipes. The rest of Bridgemore is, is uh, all PVC material, and we didn't see any issues in the PVC pipes or where water was potentially getting in. So we'll get we'll get to it in just a second, but the plan is for these pipes that are ductile iron, where we see evidence of water getting in, to align those pipes with what's called cured in place pipe. And if you're not familiar with it, essentially what they do is think of it as a as a bag or a sock that they insert into the pipe, they inflate it either with steam or hot water, or they can even use UV uh, to, to cure the pipe. Once it's been heated, it hardens, it takes the shape of that hose pipe, 
and you've got one continuous bag from manhole to manhole. So there's no, there's no joints for water to get in at. Um, so we essentially keep that water out or, or prevent it from getting back in. So that's the plan with the uh, duct alarm uh, pipes in the system. Now, we weren't really looking for it, but the picture on the left uh, was kind of something that we stumbled across when we were reviewing the TV data. Uh, this is grease. Um, it's grease that's accumulated over time. There's probably other material in there besides grease, but the bulk of it, of what's sticking to the pipe, is grease. So there's now this is the, probably the worst pipe in Bridgemore, so this is kind of an extreme case. But there are other pipes in Bridgemore that also have grease that has accumulated over time. So one other uh, recommendation that came out of reviewing that data was go ahead and give the uh, Bridgemore collection system a thorough cleaning to make sure that um, any sort of uh, potential blockages like this don't persist and continue to get worse. Because ultimately, um, this could get worse and maybe even cause a sewer overflow at some point um, if, it, if, it, if it backs up, um, if water backs up at that point in the system. So <coughs> as part of this one project, it will line those pipes that are ductile where there's water seeping in, as well as clean um, these areas where grease is accumulated over time. Um, if you don't mind, flip to the next. So this is just kind of a summation of what I just said. Uh, we've got about 2,000 linear feet of ductile iron pipe that we're looking to uh, install cured in place pipe in. Um, the subdivision as a whole is roughly 35,000 linear feet of cleaning. The opinion of cost is roughly 300 to 350,000. That's both design and construction. Um, and then if you don't mind, go to the next one just to it's a little hard to see here, um, but the purple, the, pur the um, purple lines are the those are the lines that are ductile iron that where we saw the evidence of water getting into the system. The lines that are orange are the uh, pipes that had the worst grease that we saw uh, when we were reviewing the data. Now, like I said a minute ago, we're recommending go ahead and cleaning the whole system to make sure we get all of it, but the orange lines, the orange pipes were the worst that we came across. How did we end up with different lines? Throughout the different service? materials? Yeah, okay. how did we end up with different materials? Uh, well, the, I know the uh, pipes there on the west side, those are very deep. I don't remember exactly how deep they are, but I know they're deeper than typically we would use just a regular PVC. You can also use a thicker wall PVC pipe, but that's not what was used here. They ended up using ductile. So it, uh, it's deeper here. I, I think that may also be the case for the pipes that are on the east side as well, but I'm not 100% sure on those. I know, the ones, I know the ones on the west side are deeper, but I'm not sure on the east. Is ductile iron an approved material? It is, yes. It used to be a standard, but not so much anymore. PVC was, when it first came out, considered a very inferior product. But of course, all of that has changed over time, and now it's the inverse. Yeah, uh, the town-wide, I'd say, I, I don't know the numbers right off the top of my head, but over 90% of the town's sewer system is PVC. Um, there are very few ductile iron pipes in the system. Were the ductile iron joints, were they, did they meet a standard, you know, joining procedure? I mean, were they built appropriately, from what you can tell? I, I can't. Can't say um, it's hard. I mean, it's hard to tell. And this, these were probably some of the older parts of the system as a whole. I, I don't remember exactly when they were put in the ground, but it's. it's I think it's been eight to ten years since these were. It, put it is abnormal to be leaking at eight. To yes, ten years. it is. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, will there be any service interruptions with your your SOC method? There, there'll be brief interruptions. Should only last about a day while they're putting that. In the now they'll coordinate the contractor, whoever it ultimately ends up being. They'll make sure that those folks are aware um, ahead of time that during X number of hours during the day they won't be able to do their laundry or use the bathroom. But um, it's it should only last a day. And you do that manage that by turning the water off of the homes, I assume. Is it yeah. okay? Um, 
Um, the Greece collection, is that, is there any um, reasoning behind like where that is occurring? Is it a, a just main lines, joints? Is there any, is anybody abusing the system that needs to have grease trap? I mean, is there any kind of findings here from? Well, well we, we actually talked about that a little bit at the utility board meeting last month. The school system is tied in, excuse, excuse me, the, the school is tied in to this portion of the system. So they should have a grease trap. Um, we actually talked a little bit about uh, maybe some of the town staff going by and checking with them to make sure that it is being utilized and cleaned regularly like it's supposed to be. Um, the, everything else is pretty much residential. So um, I, we also talked a little bit at the last utility board meeting. A lot of uh, uh, utilities and cities have really, uh, that have bigger problems than this, um, have really gone after it. They've done PR campaigns, come up with mascots even to get the word out that yeah. you need to That's not put grease down uh, in down your sink. Um, we, had talked, we had talked about that, to put it on the bill or whatever, not right, to right. pour certain stuff down your drain. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that we have issues, I know, in our neighborhood with the wipes. And all that stuff. Yeah, the wipes are a big problem. They're titled the flushable, but they're not, they're not flushable. Yeah. Uh, is it the building official's responsibility to check the functionality of the grease trap, or is that a health department responsibility? Actually, when it is a school, it's a higher form. They're, frankly, on their honor system. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> but it we does can't look, dictate to them. Yeah. And they do work through and with the health department, so they are supposed to be adhering to all of that. I think part of that, too, Kenny said he thought was at a lift station where they had cut on and off? The with grease accumulation? Yeah. I, yeah, I think the worst is down near the down near the pump station. And sometimes when there's construction going on, those kinds of things happen. So that allows, unfortunately, for sometimes more of the congealing and things mm -hmm. when it's not being flushed as much. Now, I will say at some point, we're not there yet, but it certainly harkens back to the discussion you all had earlier about growth. At some point, the staff is going to need probably um, a jet. There are types that you can pull behind vehicles as opposed to the very expensive trucks that have all of that on it. You probably have seen those in larger jurisdictions. That type of maintenance at some point is going to be needed, and uh, it will preclude you from having to go back and, and do this by way of a uh, the consultant and or contractor ultimately. Mm -hmm. But we're not there yet. Okay. They're very expensive um, pieces of they equipment. Are. You have to have staff. It's involved. Yeah, let me get Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs over here. Um, one more question. The septage that comes out of all this repair, mm -hmm. does our system have to handle that? Is that usually part of the contract? Uh, the contractor will, whatever he flushes out, he'll, uh, he'll capture that and haul it off-site and oh, dispose so of it somebody properly. else's system, not yeah. our, okay. I noticed this agreement is hourly, is that accurate? It's not lump sum, is that standard? Uh, all our, all of Barge's contracts have been hourly with you, okay. with the town. Is there a cap? There's so a, a yeah, there's a total, uh, Forty-eight thousand. Forty-nine thousand. Right, is the estimate. Page Deliverables seven. and scope are on page one and two. Yeah, it, the amount is on the next to last page. Right. And, and it's not really particularly involved, I wouldn't think, when you look at the scope. I mean, it's something y'all have done regularly enough and deliverables. What's the time frame? Uh, that's also on the next to last page. We were looking at roughly four and a half months for design and bidding, and then uh, another, roughly another four months of construction. Now, I should say that construction time, that's contract time. I don't expect the construction itself to actually last that long. It, construction will probably last uh, less than a month total. Okay. Any more? Question from the board, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve board professional services agreement for the Bridgemore sewer rehabilitation project. 
I have a motion and a second. Um, any more further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Sounds like that's a 4-0 pass. Thank you, Matthew. Appreciate it. Okay, um, moving on. New business, item number seven. Recommendations to the Town of Thompson Station for the BZA, the Board of Zoning Appeal, two positions. The Town Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, two positions. Design Review Commission, one position. The terms exp expire uh, December 1, 2021. And these are, um, the DRC is mayoral appointed. Staff? Your brothers, as to any candidates that, <coughs> as you just said, with that one exception. Okay, so the DRC is, the, the DRC. Mayor, mayor, the DRC is mayor appointed only. Everything else is board action required. Correct. Okay. And, and you all got two, um, the two existing board zoning appeals members reapplied. Uh, and we got one existing parks board member that reapplied <coughs> and one new member. Okay. So and we have candidates for all positions. So, and the risk not appointing tonight means we would have empty seats if something did hit, but uh, a BZA is, is by meeting only, by requiring by need only. Town of Fort Park and Rex does a, we do have a December meeting, I think. Is that right, Mike? Do we meet in December? We don't meet in we do December not. tonight. So. Okay. So uh, I, I was you know, just, I thought we'd hopefully we'd see one or two people. Um, these are very important roles. Um, yeah, I'll turn it over to the board. I guess we can take action or, or not. Is it, are we required to have these seated? I mean, there's nothing in our- and I think you, you made a very good point. Um, board of Zoning Appeals meets very infrequently. The only concern is sometimes, and it's, it's not likely whether you'd have a quorum or not, if, if something happened that you had a case maybe during the holidays where people are traveling or spring break or what have you may not have a forum. But Refresh my memory, how many are on the BZA? Five. So we'd have, we have, we have, we have three, which is, does not meet corn. That meets well, corn? That, I mean, that's kind of pretty close. Okay. Yeah, because again, if somebody's traveling or whatever. I mean, it would put the BZA at a disadvantage for being able to, you know, if somebody was out of town or something like that. Yeah, if I may, that's probably one of the larger responsibilities in that they have to act quickly because there's timing requirements when someone appeals any number of things to the BZA. Sometimes we have a rash three in a row in three months and then you go a year without having it, but uh, I think BZA is very important um, and, and having five, a full board, uh, in my case, is correct in that. Having that is, 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 yeah. is good. Um, so something could happen next week that requires something within 30 days and y'all don't meet formally, regularly again until January. So. Right, right. Is there a reason not to take action? I, I guess not. No, I honestly, these, no, I, I, I was just letting everybody know that, that just what the scenario was if we did not. Um, I, I think it does, uh, the BZA is, it is important. It's a, it's the last stop gap with our land development ordinance. Um, I know I've been very thankful for these, uh, for Mr. Levin and uh, Ms. Herring and I think they've done a great job. So no, I, I have no problem moving forward with uh, any kind of recommendation tonight. What about parks? Parks, we have, the same, they're, they're it's, all, it's all reapplying. We no, can, I mean, just one. It's a new one, right? Yeah, yeah this um, is new. One, one reapplication yeah. and one new. Yeah, Jamie, is that a Mr. and Mrs. The Ewald is, is, a, is a new new person. And Zena Harris is currently on the, on the board. Didn't we just? She, that's Zena was replacing Jim Badley's term, so she was just an, you know. Got it. I thought when we did that, it extended uh, for a time. Ms. Harris has done a great job. She's been very active on the board, so on the on the um, advisory board. No, I have no. We can we can totally make a make a motion. Uh, Do we want to talk about them separately? I guess we have to. Uh, yeah. I would like to take sure. the body separately yeah. at a minimum, sure. and if you want to do each individual member, that'd be fine as well. Um, we just make a motion to just... approve. Uh, Maybe they'll give the two names for the each. Or as a group for each one for the BZA. BZA, BZA Max Parks. <laughs> Okay. 
motion by the town. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the, the two applicants for uh, the town BZA, Mary Heron and Bryce Morgan. I'll okay. second that. Okay, I got a motion and a proper second. Any discussion on BZA appointees? Yeah, we appreciate oh. sir. Yes, we do appreciate it. All, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, ayes have it. Move on to Parks Advisory Board. I'll make a motion to approve. Well, hold on, it's only one. Oh, it actually, one. it's one between two people, right? Well, there are two positions. No, there's two, two open positions. positions. You have two, two positions. Two positions. positions. Yeah, Ms. Harris, Zine Harris wants to return, and then uh, and Mary, Mary Harris. Harris. He, he is, he is, he's, he's retiring. He's resigning. He will not. And we'll have a um, presentation for him in the meeting. Okay, thank you. Not resigning, but just not renewing. Just not renewing. Right. <laughs> Retiring. Thank you. Yes, no, thank you, Mr. Simmons, for your service. Yes, I'm sorry. That was not. I'll make a motion to approve Benjamin Wall and Nina Harris Parks approved. Okay, I got a motion and a second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, 4 0 pass. All right, uh, last item on new business, number eight, Anson Property Agreement regarding wastewater line easements. <clears throat> the attorneys can take it over, but I'll just quickly say we had an agreement on file for some years back when the board was comprised of three, never executed. So we've been back and forth trying to deal with this issue of having an easement through property without an executed instrument. Um, this like a number of things that were mentioned earlier in the downtown area moving forward i think this is a very good indication and a positive sign to see resolution to a, a long existing uh, item so with that um mr chair uh i guess we should rename this to the heather leah hackett 2018 irrevocable trust because all the land is not owned by Mr. Anson anymore. He put it into a trust. Yeah. Um, we negotiated with his attorney to finalize this. Uh, it is substantially similar to the agreement that had been sitting out there and was never finalized. And you know, from the hip, it's substantially similar to what it would cost to condemn uh, the wastewater line easement that we already need across the property because the line's already there. So I think this is fair and in the best interest of the town and, and puts to bed that issue. Um, so just to, to recap, there, there is a, uh, an easement that's an exhibit to this agreement. There's also a reservation agreement because uh, as with the previous agreement, uh, there are taps involved uh, and a waiver of fees on that. So there's two taps tied to the property, uh, non-transferable um, and um, assistance with connection. Uh, and that was in the, the prior agreement, and that's what is being presented for your approval to uh, put this issue to bed. I just need a, there's no resolution on it because we have the full agreement. I just need a motion up or down from this board. I noticed the, um, the wastewater capacity agreement, you know, did not have the attachments. Are we, you know, the en engineering letter wasn't attached? Are we okay? With that? Yeah, because it's residential uh, in, in, in such low number. Some of the other ones we've had that are one and two, we haven't had. There's okay. no improvements that are required because of that. Uh, it is it is going to be accounted for within our right right capacity that's there. That that's the main reason for the reservation agreement because it is the mechanism by which reservations are made. Gotcha. So we kind of have to make sure to use it. It does show I think two fifty times two five hundred. I think that which makes right. sense. Okay. Correct. All right. Motion approved. Second. All right, motion and second. Any more discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it four to zero. Okay, uh, financial report is attached to your packet. There's some updates. We talked uh, any more. Do we want to hit these key project up monthly updates? Do you want to hit that? Yeah, update? these come from each of the contractors that we have, we the town of Thompson Station, have entered into agreements with for each of the major projects that we have going on in town. So that is all included. Um, Alderman Stover wanted a quick update. Micah can speak to that regarding 
um, a CMAC grant we're trying to get for signalization improvements. So that's different than, you know, these that are ongoing projects and contracts. Michael, would you like to talk a little bit about that? Sure. This would relate to the uh, signal at 31 and Thompson Station Road. Uh, we're doing a joint CMAC, which is a TDOT grant, basically, um, application to upgrade signals from that signal all the way down to some point in Spring Hill. Uh, and so that would give us some money to upgrade those. You've already budgeted some money to upgrade that. So we were just kind of waiting to see when, you know, if we would get the grant money first and not have to use town money. Um, TDOT has a new commissioner, or has a their commissioner left, so they've got an interim commissioner, so that's caused some delay in the grant awards. Uh, we found out today from, from TDOT. Uh, so they do uh, intend to make the awards by the end of this month. Uh, so we'll kind of wait to see what happens with that and then move forward uh, if we need to uh, upgrade the signal. Um, we won't have to pay as much as what we originally thought. If we can get the grant, we only have to pay. Have we done a, did they get an estimate from, uh, I guess, Waller? Who gave well, us, we had an estimate for it, I thought. Uh, Brian got that. That's and S&W. S&W Light. S&W, so we, get, we got an estimate. What was the cost to do, to do the box? Uh, it's been a few, I think it was like 26,000. We budgeted at least, at least that much. Yeah. So, so if we had to, we could pull the trigger and do it now. But and that's my concern. If we, we don't get the grant, we, I think there needs to be something done. Yeah, we'll sure. to we can do it if we don't get the grant, but I think the grant is more than just the money. As has been mentioned before, it's trying to coordinate and work with Spring Hill. One of the things I've seen going on now, I guess for the better part, as we move towards three years, is the uh, constant discussion about the signals favoring east or west or north or south allowing this user group versus that user group to have more time during this time or that time. And depending on where you are in that debate, it, it continues to be a never ending cycle of discussion. The hope is by doing more jointly, and I think frankly with the change in personnel in Spring Hill, it's gotten a little better in terms of elevating the discussion and not favoring just throw it north-south. So I think this is going to be helpful in terms of the big picture yeah. as well. Not just the hardware, but the people portion I was sure. talking about earlier. Well, that's, I, I appreciate the coordination. The, the only other thing I would add, it, the grant could dictate that we need different equipment if we are coordinating with Spring Hill. So that, that may be a different differentiation that as well. The equipment at the uh, Chrysler 31 seems to work pretty well for the most part. So, uh, well, it d again, depends on who you talk to. We've had one individual that's called four times in the last two weeks. Where does, where does he live? He, he says Thompson Station, but I think he means the zip code. Okay. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, we have a process to how we establish the signal sign. Yeah, and we have so, a programmer that came in and looked at that. Yeah, so in do the we last have to do anything them. else to reprogram? Do we need to, uh, is there a study or anything that has to be done? Or are we just... We'll look at this as part of the major thoroughfare plan. There will probably, probably be additional signal timing that we'll have to do uh, as a sub-component of that. Okay. Um, but it's probably about, we were talking about that uh, last couple of weeks, it's probably about time to upgrade or to update the signal timing plans kind of town-wide. Okay. Anyway. Does anybody else have access to that box besides the sheriff and Mr. Because uh, it got brought up at the la at, at either, I can't remember if it was PC or Bo our last Bowman meeting, that Mr. Gordon indicated that somebody had been meddling with the signal at the church. And some other people were like, oh, yeah. So you said there's padlocks on you that? remember that get brought up? Yes. So just to comfort our brains, you put new padlocks yeah, on not, there? That's not an accusation. It's just that, that I just, I mean, I so it, so some people might have a key to that box that we don't know about. So... Padlocks, nobody has a key to unless I got it. I'm the only one. You're the only one that's got it. Yeah. So how did the sheriff, if he's out there operating on Sundays. Sheriff is using the outside little uh, interface. access box okay. just for remote zone. So he has no access inside program. that box. Okay, so it's just manual control while yeah, you're there. Yeah, he's just manual okay. Well, I mean, that's, that's fine. Yeah. It got brought up. Yeah. I'm asking the question. I, I hadn't heard that before, but. Uh, yeah. I have padlocks on 
all our bodies. Because if we were thinking somebody was getting them, that's Well, maybe that's what he was thinking too. I didn't even put him on the spot. So so we've we got an all new set of padlocks that, you know, only certain me and I think Ken's and they have one in his office. And I trust me, I have not gone in those boxes. <laughs> so just, so just real quick. So I don't know if anyone else has called you, but if you want to update everyone, four thirty-one and the Kreitz Lane box. I am working with Barge, with Teresa, trying to get a timing plan that's going to make everybody happy. But we're, we're I'm doing my best. Yeah, but, oh, I didn't hear about a call. But. So it's, I guess, something happened to the memory of the box or whatever, and. You're getting lined up traffic on Christ, and you get lined up traffic on 431. And Brian had a wonderful conversation while I was sitting there for a few minutes the other day. But the memory has lapsed on that light. So we either got It's the same equipment as on the other side. You know, it's, all our equipment is the same. And the person that came in did reprogram. And we, we've had to basically recreate the signal timing plan for some, some reason. They really can't explain to us why it has happened, but we've. We got to we're working we on it. started this week or last week, but you got it, two sides that are very unhappy because yeah. you either have, you're, you're way back there almost a pan tall, but the traffic flows. Once it turns, everyone can flow through quickly. It's just you got to wait three minutes. It's going to be a work in progress. We've got more subdivisions opening down 431. People are going back to work, you know, from COVID absence. So I think it's just a confluence of events. Has there been any discussion? I'm sorry. No, that, that's all right. I just it was a good jumping off point um, while we're here. 31, the South Corridor study is going to result ultimately, I hope, in that being unveiled and coming back to all the jurisdictions up and down the corridor, showing what it'll look like. And uh, that's that's going to be great once it gets underway. But it'll it'll take a number of years. But at least. It is moving to the forefront. So, but I didn't mean to interrupt. Has there been any discussion about 431 and 840? There's a huge, it's starting to become a huge backup right there. There's already been a couple of accidents right there. Has TDOT expressed anything or have we looked at that intersection about how we can help that? Well, Spring Hill is redoing yeah. that entire intersection at 840 and, um, and, and 431. Spring Hill? Spring Hill and the federal government. I'm talking about the interchange. I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about. Oh, just the light yeah. itself. No, 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 no. I'm talking about coming off 840. Are you, you talking about, about when you're heading southbound on 431, getting off 840, going southbound, like you're going to go to the Greystone Quarry. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. Yeah, it's pretty sad. I can tell you why, because there's people stopping, stopping the traffic, heading north out. You've seen it. They don't understand that you can drive all the way up. Right. They stop. And it causes a backup all the way on 840. And then when you got people trying to drive north to merge back onto 840, they just sit there until someone lets them through. Yeah. And that causes someone to get rear-ended. One of the major kind of emphasis points of the major thoroughfare plan update is going to be the Lewisburg Pike corridor yeah. kind of as a whole, but uh, especially the 840 uh, interchange. The 840-65 interchange is one of the most congested uh, points in the entire state uh, and so we're going to kind of take that to TDOT and we see spillover of that because people are getting off uh, at, at 840 and in Lewisburg so we're going to bring that to, uh, to, to TDOT and, and try to get some my biggest concern resolution. is when you're traveling I'm not sure I get my direction here, west on 840 you come past 65 and you want to go off at 431 you're in dead man's zone yeah, I mean, yes, you, yeah. there is no place. Plus, I'll come in from Murfreesboro on occasion, and if you're trying to get over and that traffic's already backed up, it, it well, gets hairy. You're going 75 going past it, somebody merges back in. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's hairy. It's it's pretty pretty no, we'll have several. I mean, we're going to have multiple discussions with TDOT about uh, all the state routes, but especially 840 and 431. Thank you. All right. Anything else? One real quick thing about the wastewater thing. You know, you'd ask for a milestone of price. We'd ask for the tap reservation. Yeah, total count. We yeah, that out? he's working on that. He's coming back to the utility board because the last meeting, as you'll recall, the discussion was 
how far to go beyond one million, whether it was 1.25 or one and a half million. Well, I think it was just more and, where we stand right now. Oh. Yeah, I'm not even worried about actual gallons. We, we have a reservation capacity, right. a reservation process. We've approved a bunch. I'm just looking for a spreadsheet. Right, well, we're, and we'll, he's, he's putting that together. The one that he put together wasn't so much the taps, but we were within, I think, 5,000 gallons per day of already hitting that million benchmark. So I think that's what we really are needing to focus on is the capacity that we're paying for in the plant and what that's, that million's not gonna do anything for us. Now that we're gonna have this federal money, the recommendation's gonna be the staff recommendation to take that nearly two million and apply it to go beyond a million to either the 1.25 or one and a half million gallon plant. Because we know we've already raised fees to cover the improvements up to a million. But I think to the point that was made earlier, we're now getting all of these capacity reservation requests that are already gonna put us back where we have been in the same position if we don't build the additional capacity. Do we so, have, but do we have the list right now of where we stand as far as what's approved, like uh, Parsons Valley, Tollgate? We can get that. That's, what, a, that's what we really yeah, have. Well, and I think that's what was requested earlier the, the, um, tonight, the plats. How many are approved? How many connections? And that pretty well cross references with the reservation documents that we've been approved. <laughs> Yeah. But but from, from yeah, but when all of that is said and done, where the rubber meets the road, is either you have the capacity or don't. Well, and, and the one thing I'll say, we're, we're really not going to have it unless, and that'll be coming back to you folks in the in new uh, in the new year. We're going to have to have authorization to do those things. The, the rest you're talking about the rescue plan money. I am, and the state and the comptroller in particularly has been rather adamant. They feel it should be used for multi-generational improvements and projects like this. And they've actually named specifically on a few occasions in meetings and conferences I've been in, things like these wastewater improvements. They should drive down some of our roads. Sir? They should drive down some of our roads. Yeah. The one thing I'll say about the reservation agreements, those have been almost exclusively for residential. Mm -hmm. So commercial has not, they're waiting. We need, we, that's why we need the capacity. Yeah, they, they're, they're under the impression that there will be capacity and they yeah. don't have to go through the reservation process. I've had that conversation with developers that they no. don't need to think that way, but uh, commercial has sat on the sidelines. So if we don't increase the capacity, we're going to be in the same situation we are now with commercial development saying, well, I wish we could come into Thompson Station, but there's no sewer. I get that part. I think for now, though, we just, that's a good conversation. We're going to have that one. But for now, I think what we're looking for is just a list, correct? Just where we stand. And we know what we got to do. We know we got to look at expansion. But for right now, just where it stands, who's approved, who's going in. Because I still sell the utility board and I still can't keep up with it some days. <laughs> what all's approved and what's not. Mr. So. Chair, I, I, and I think Barge will have that. They'll yeah. have that specific list and they've got it outlined. They'll know how, to whom it's been assigned, how it's been assigned, and I think that's something that, that can seems be like, oh, that's, that's easily. That's absolutely. That, yes. And I'd like to see it cross referenced so you have the plan, because that was asked again tonight. Yeah. How many subdivisions? It should be something that you'll be able to see information in several different ways. But I mean, obviously the bottom line is where we're gonna be first of the year. These millions of dollars, how to spend them, and how not to end up in the shape we're in now. So. All right, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, second? Second, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, good night everybody. <laughs>